Welcome back everyone for part two of lecture two. In this part, what we're gonna talk about is a degree of freedom of analysis, and we're also gonna do a little practice doing these degree of freedom analyses. All right, so we've talked about this process unit, we talked about these feed and these product streams. The next question you're probably gonna be wondering is, if we have one of these flow streams, when is it fully defined? How do we define the stream? What information do we need to know? And in order to answer these questions, that's where the degree of freedom analysis is gonna come in is gonna come in. So for us, with the degree of freedom analysis, what we want to do is find the number of independent stream variables for a given stream, and those ISVs are gonna equal no, the number of components, which I'm abbreviating as NC. So after I figure out the number of independent stream variables, so essentially my the number of components I have. We're next gonna find out how many pieces of information we have. Each piece of information will reduce our independent stream variables by one. And what you may be wondering, what is a piece of information? So that can be a molar flow rate, it could be a mass flow rate of one of our streams. It could be one of the component flow rates. It could also be a mass fraction or a mole fraction for one of your streams. All of those are useful pieces of information and each one of those would reduce your degrees of freedom by a value of one. So for us, when we have a degree of freedom of zero, that means that we have all the information we need in order to solve the problem. No more, no less. When we have a degree of freedom of one, that means we have too little information. It means that I would need one more piece of information in order to solve my problem. And so if I had a degree of freedom of three, that means that I need three new pieces of information in order to solve my problem. Now, we can also have a degree of freedom of, let's say, negative one. And for that, it means that we have too much information. So that can be that my process is overspecified, where I may tell you, oh, I need a temperature of this, and I need a pressure of that. And there is no physical way that that is happening. Or it could also mean that with all that information, I, you might have gotten like one bonus piece of information that just makes your life easier in solving the entire problem. So some of the times you could solve the problem if you have too much information. It may just be that you got an extra piece revealed to you. If you have too little information, it's an open-ended type of a problem and there's gonna be a lot of different solutions that can, uh, a lot of different solutions that you can obtain. So that's our, those are our degrees of freedom. Now, for us, we're gonna go through some examples for reducing our independent stream variables, our ISVs. So the first one is a material balance. And for a material balance, that's tracking, let's say the total amount of your material coming into your system, total amount coming out of your system. It could also be the amount of one of your components going in and out of your system. The next, next important, uh, another piece of information you could be using is our energy balances. So again, same, same idea as a material balance, except we're now gonna look at the energy input and output for our system. And for the first part of our class, we're mostly gonna be focusing on using material balances. Energy balances will come into play in the second half of the class. Another, another, another thing that we can use to do reduce our, our degrees of freedom is a process specification. And that's gonna be something that relates to process variables. So one example is the mass flow rate of stream one is 30% of that in stream two, okay? So for that, that means that, for example, I have M1 dot is gonna equal 0 0.3 times M2 dot, where an M, an M with a dot on top of it represents a mass flow rate. And so for us, if I have an M1 dot equals 0 0.3 M2 dot, that means that stream one is 30% the flow of stream two. Another piece of information we can use are physical properties, and we can also use stoichiometric relations. So if we know that for a reaction, A plus 2B equals C, or yields C, we may, say, we may hear that A and B are being fed stoichiometrically. And in that case, if I know what amount of A I have coming into the system, I also know how much B I have coming into the system because I have stoichiometric amounts. Okay. So now we're gonna jump into some practice problems doing these degree of freedom analyses.
So for our first problem, we're going to just start with a stream. And in the stream, I've got three components. I have nitrogen, methane, and ethane. And for the stream, I have some information. So I know that the total molar flow rate is 10,000 gram moles per hour. I know that my, mole, my mass fraction of nitrogen is 0.2. My mass fraction of methane is 0.4. So for us, we're now going to try and figure out what, is, what are our degrees of freedom? How many do we have? So for us, we got to first figure out how many I, independent stream variables we have. So in this case, we would have three, and that's for the nitrogen, methane, and ethane. How many pieces of information do we know? Well, we know three. That's all that information that's listed in the middle of the slide. We know the total molar flow rate. We know the mass fraction of nitrogen and the mass fraction of methane. So now, if we take our ISVs and subtract out the ISVs known, we have zero degrees of freedom. So we could solve this problem. Okay. Uh, for our next example, we're going to use the same stream, but in this case, I'm going to change up that information that I'm providing to you. So in this case, instead of having a total molar flow rate and having two mass fractions, I'm going to give you some other information. So in this case, I'm going to provide the, the molar flow rate for each of my species in the stream. So in this case, I, I know that the molar flow rate of nitrogen is 2,000 gram moles per hour, the molar flow rate of methane is 4,000 gram moles per hour, and the molar flow rate of ethane is 4,000 gram moles per hour. And again, returning to our degree of freedom analysis, we would see that we have three independent stream variables. We know that we have three pieces of information, although they're a little bit different than example one. We still have three pieces that are all independent, so I'm, I can still use those. And for us, if we subtract the ISVs from the ISVs known, we have zero degrees of freedom again. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our third example with our degree of freedom analysis. In this case, we're gonna up the ante a little bit. So now we're gonna have a whole process where we have stream one coming into the system and we have stream two coming out of the system. And we're gonna perform a degree of freedom analysis on this entire system. But first we're gonna focus on stream one and look at what are the ISVs and what do we know about stream one. So in stream one, if we look at the independent stream variables, we would know that we have four independent stream variables and that's one for each of those components, C1, C2, C3, and C4. If we look at what piece of information we have, we would see that we have one piece of information. I know the mass fraction of C1, which is 0.6. And so then for stream one, I would find out that I have three degrees of freedom by taking the ISVs and subtracting out the ISVs known. Now, if we expand for the entire process now and do the, do the degree of freedom analysis for everything, we would see that we have for ISVs, we have six ISVs because now on top of the four we have for stream one, I have two more for stream two. For the ISVs known, I still only have one piece of information and that's the mass fraction of C1 from stream one. And now instead of having three degrees of freedom, that was from stream one, I now have five degrees of freedom. So now the question is, how do we get rid of those degrees of freedom? What information would be useful to help us reduce that? And for us, that could be the total mass flow rate it can also be the mass fraction of C2, it could be the mass fraction of C3, and if you want to, you can replace the mass fraction of C2 or C3 with the mass fraction of C4. Now, you can't use all three pieces of information with regards to the mass fraction. You can use C2, C3, and C4, all right? And that, that leads me to my disclaimer or my warning. To reduce your degrees of freedom down to zero, you cannot solely use mass or mole fractions. And here is why. If you already have the mass or molar compositions of all but one of the items in your system, you would have all the information you have you need for all the, the components. So you can simply do one minus mass fraction of item one, mass fraction of item two, so on and so forth, so that you figure out what the final composition is because everything has to equal one if you're dealing with a mass or a mole fraction. So just to quickly go over one example of that, we, we can have this stream of C1, C2, C3. I can tell you that the mass fractions of C1 are 0.6 and the mass fraction of C2 is 0.3. So for us, we would know that the mass fraction of C3 is equal to 
because if I do 1 minus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.3, we know it's 0.1. So for me to tell you that the mass fraction of C3 is 0.1 does not add any additional information to you. You could have figured that out without me telling you. And for that reason, you can't use all of the mole fractions for reducing your degrees of freedom. You can use all but one of the mole fractions. So if I had two items in my system, I could use one mole fraction to reduce my degrees of freedom by one. I couldn't use the second mole fraction because I already could have figured that out. So please just be aware of that and be mindful of that when you're doing your degree of freedom analysis, not to bank on using just all mole fractions to reduce your degrees of freedom to zero. And now we're gonna jump over to our final example for this video session. So for us, I've got this more complex system. I have three streams now. I have stream ones, two, and three. And now we're gonna do the degree of freedom analysis again. So for this one, for the entire system, I have how many independent stream variables? We've got eight of them. So we've got four for stream one. I have two for stream three and two for stream two. How many items do I know? Well, I know two of them. I know the composition of C1 in, in stream one, and I also know the total molar flow rate of stream one, which is 100 gram moles per hour. So now I, I, have, I would have six unknowns, and if we want to, to further to reduce our degrees of freedom, we can use material balances to help us with that. So for us, I can use one material balance per component. So because I have four different species in my system, I have C1, 2, 3, and 4, I can use four material balances. And just, just as a reminder, I'm using MB as my abbreviation for material balance. And now, now that I've exhausted all the information I can obtain from the system, I can figure out how many degrees of freedom I have, which in this case, I would have two. And now, now that I have two degrees of freedom, then I now, I now am asked, I'm challenged with what other information could I use to reduce my degrees of freedom? And there's a couple of different option for uh, a couple of different options for us. So one example is that I could get the mass fractions of C2 and C3 for stream one. And if I had that information, I could solve everything. And I can figure out what the composition and the flow rates of streams one, uh, two and three are. Another, another couple of items I, I could use to reduce my degrees of freedom could be getting the molar flow rate of stream two and the mass fraction of, stream, uh, of component three in stream one. And lastly, I could, or, or one more example could be that I can get the molar flow rate of C2 in stream one or, and the molar flow rate of C3 in stream one. And again, this is not an exhaustive list of examples, but this is just giving you a sense of additional pieces of information to help me reduce my degrees of freedom down to zero. And now just to recap what we covered in this part of our lecture two, we talked about what a degree of freedom analysis, a degree of freedom analysis is, and we got to do some practice performing degrees of freedom analyses. All right, thanks very much and stay tuned for more.